This video is going to be a brief introduction to servos. Fortunately, there's a lot of sample code in the FTC uh, robot controller app. The hardware file that I already created for my robot used to be a canine bot. And in this hardware uh, test bot code, I need to add in the code for my servo. Really, I'm just declaring what the servo is and setting it up. So just like I wrote the code for my DC motors, giving them a name and setting them up, I need to find the code here that will create a servo. And that's public servo. Give it the name arm, and I'm going to set that equal to null, which means nothing for now. Now this next part is not absolutely necessary, but it is very useful. I'm going to create three variables to hold information that will never change. The first one is arm home. This is going to be a number uh, that holds the position that when your robot starts, it always moves the servo to this position. The other two are the minimum and maximum values for the servo. So the minimum number for the servo and the maximum. This is useful because you may not want your servo to move too far in one direction because if it does maybe it hits something and then it breaks the servo motors internal gears. So even though the value we can give the servo can be anywhere from 0 to 1, you may only want your range of your servo to go from maybe 0.2 to 0.7, because if it goes any further than those, maybe it hits something. So now we've created the servo. Now we need to initialize it. So go down and do our initialize uh, function, where we initialize the hardware. This is where we set up our motors to be connected to the phone and uh, set their power to zero. For the servo, we need to create the arm and set it equal to whatever the name of the servo will be in the phone. So we're mapping it to the name in the phone. And in this case, arm is short enough, so I'm just going to call it arm on the phone as well. Then I have one last piece of code. I'm going to, this is the code that actually moves the servo. Arm dot set position. And then inside that parentheses, I put the position that I want the servo to move to. And in this case, I set it equal to the arm, home, because the home is where I want the robot to move the servo when it's first turned on. All right, so now I'm going to write my teleop code. I really like to write the teleop code first because I can control that with the joystick and then find out the positions of the servo that I like the most. So inside my teleop code, I've created my robot, and then I'm going to create a variable called arm position. This is going to hold where the servo should be, that value, and it's going to start off equal to the arm home that we created inside the robot. Another useful variable you're going to need is arm speed. This is going to be a variable that controls how fast you change the position of your servo as you hold the buttons down in Teleop. Right now we're only going to change it by one hundredth every time you're holding the button in. So if you wanted to uh, speed up the servo movement, you could increase that to maybe five hundredths or one tenth or something like that. Now we're in the actual op mode code. We initialize the hardware, which was running the code in the hardware test bot or whatever you called your robot code. Then we wait for start. So we're waiting for the driver to press the play button and then we're in this while loop while the op mode is active we keep running this code over and over and over we keep reading from the joystick 
and, and driving the robot. And then we also, right here, want to use this code to check to see if the person's pressing the A button on the gamepad. So it says if gamepad1.a, meaning if, if someone's pressing it, it'll be true. And if it's true, we're going to run the next line of code. So we're going to take the arm position, and if you see a little plus equals arm speed. So we're taking the arm position number, and we're adding on a little bit of the arm speed so that it will increase. The next line is else if gamepad 1.y. So we're asking, is gamepad 1.y? Is that button, the Y button, being pressed in? If it's being pressed in, do the next line of code. And the next line of code is arm position, and it's got minus equals. It means we're going to decrement. We're going to decrease arm position by the value in arm speed. So we're subtracting a little bit from the arm position. We only have a couple more lines of code. The first one is uh, not needed, but very useful. It says arm position is equal to range clip. We're clipping the arm position to be between the minimum and the maximum, meaning it's forcing that number to be between the minimum and maximum numbers. And then finally, we're going to go robot.arm.setPosition and give it that value, that arm position number, to actually move it. This is the line of code that actually moves the servo. We got one more line of code, and it's perhaps one of the most important lines of code. It's the telemetry. We're adding in a line of code to print to the phone screen what position the servo's at. So get into your teleop mode, you drive your robot, you move your servo, and then you can see what value corresponds to what position. What is the minimum value? What is the maximum value? What do you want your home value to be? And then you can go back into your hardware uh, code and set those values to the exact numbers that you want. You can also pay attention to the values you want it to move to for your autonomous mode. So here's my robot running in teleop mode. And if you look very carefully at the bottom of the phone, you can see it says arm, and then it has the decimal value of what position the arm is at. And you can keep track of those numbers to always move the servo where you want it to move. Let's go back to my autonomous mode and add servo code to my autonomous mode. So I'm inside my testbot simple auto. I've created my robot. I wait for the start. That's for waiting for the driver to press play. And then my driving code is to drive, turn left, and drive forward. I'm going to get rid of the turn left and drive forward and just have my robot drive forward and then stop its motors. And at, after it's stopped its motors, I'm going to make the servo move to zero, and then move the servo back down. So this is pretty easy. So I type robot. That'll give me access to my arm. So I go dot arm, and then I want to set the position. So I say dot set position. And for my robot, the up position is zero. So I type that in, and then I have to put a sleep. I need to give the robot time to move to that position. So I'm going to give it a sleep of 1,000 milliseconds, which is equal to sleeping for one second. Now I want to make the, the servo go back down, so I type robot.on.setPosition, and in my case, to make it go down, that could be a value of 0.5. I then tell it to sleep again for a second to give the servo time to move into its position. And that's it. It's really easy to write servo code in the autonomous.